tickets for Ollie Merce. You enjoyed that. Shame you couldn't meet him. Yeah, yeah, shame. Would you have liked to but hold his hand there? Off, not only his hand. <laughs> <laughs> 84-year-old Shirley has come into A&E with her daughter Diane after falling over her ironing board. Look, look, that's an ambulance man. Behind reception. All right, yeah. Mm. He's fit. Very tall. All same laying down, He's love. Very tall. <laughs> don't start me laughing My again. My arm hurts. Don't make me laugh. It's best medicine. Only hurts when you laugh. Isn't it? Laughter is the best medicine. Yeah. And you can't buy love. And you can't buy happiness, can you? No. We've learnt that through life. Although I wasn't born in the sound of bow bells, I'm a real cockney type person, yes, yes. Might be a little bit common. <laughs> what happened? I was upstairs tidying up. Mm -hmm. I did a bit of ironing. Mm -hmm. Then I took the pile of clothes to go and put them in the earring cupboard in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. And I tripped over the ironing board. Okay. And I ain't yeah. been in the pub. No. <laughs> don't smoke, don't drink. Good. Only smoke after sex. <laughs> oh, no, stop it. <laughs> right, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have a little look, OK? Let me help As you get much. out of the sling. Don't spoil me curls. No, absolutely. I had ten brothers and sisters. There was eleven altogether. It was hard. But we had fun. Do you want to come back and stay with me for a couple of days? Till... No, no, no. I was 17 when I went to work and I met my husband, Alan. He gave me love and, he, and affection. And I never had it when I was young. Yeah, my life began when I met him. He was a printer and I was a box maker. I used to go by him and he used to be smiling at me. I went back to the belt where I worked. I said, oh, that bloke over there. Every time I go by, he's grinning and showing his white teeth. <laughs> his mate, Jock, said to him, you'll marry that girl, Joe. And he blooming did, didn't he? Happiest years of my life. I got one of the senior doctors just to have a little look at the x-ray. She agreed with me that there was this very, very slight little abnormality just kind of on, on this region here. She agreed with the management plan of basically getting you followed up uh, by the orthopaedic team. Alan made me feel very special, like a queen. We were always laughing. OK, that's not bad. We went to bed this night and he said, Shell, shall we play a game? So I said, yeah, all right. So he said, you hide. And if I find you, I can have you. Is that all right? So I said, oh, yeah. And if you can't find me, I'll be in the wardrobe. <laughs> Just pop your arm in this sling. Eleven years ago, Alan died. And I miss him terribly. But we had two lovely children together. Susan is the eldest and Diane is the youngest and I loved them both to bits. I didn't want any of them to feel like I did when I was young. Oh, I do love you, though. Yeah, I love you too, darling. Forever. Thank you, forever. Forever my love. When you've had a life like I've had, you learn you can't buy love. That's all right, darling. You can give me a cuddle, of course you can. It doesn't matter if you're the richest person in the world, you can't buy love. Ready then? Betty bye. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Oh, that's all right, we're done. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Top of the world. <laughs> Stop being a flirt. Come on. Bye bye. So, what does Amy look like? So, when I see her, I know. <laughs> You mean saying then? Yeah, I'll tell her that. I'll tell her you said that. <laughs> I found beautiful Amy. Wait. There we are. Sorry, Rosby. We'd been together coming up for about seven years. One Saturday, Josh suggested walking through one of the parks. He asked me if I thought there was any fish in the water. I was like, I don't know, do you want to go look? 
So we went down to look at this bit of water and then I just heard this voice behind me, so I turned around and he was down on one knee. Amy, will you marry me? <laughs> It's nice when someone makes a commitment like that. You know, you'll always be there for each other through the ups and the downs. The medical team have now received the results of Josh's CT scan. There you go. Oh. Yeah, as if by magic. Whoa. Hey. It's broken on both sides. So this one's the tibia. Yeah. Hello, my name is Ali, one of the orthopedic doctors here. Your leg actually on the air, on the CT scans looks better than it was when we saw it. But uh, it needs surgery. Yeah. It was just quite a stressful time. Lots of wedding stuff to start doing. It was quite scary not knowing what was going to happen and how long it was going to take. I was always going to marry Amy. You know, even if I was in a wheelchair, I would have still been there and made sure it all went ahead. One, one of the, the, the phrases that we were going to commit to was uh, in sickness and health. So it felt a bit like this was a mini test. Bend it as much as you can towards you, that's it. My ankle is actually peaked from this angle. Barman Robert is having an x-ray of his ankle after a beer barrel fell on his foot. All right, so we're going to have a look at your ankle now. So if we take these out, that's it. A few months ago, I found out that I was going to be a dad. At first, I just had a little panic, stress in. I was just like, no, this can't be happening. Like, my life is over. I've got a little life to be responsible for. No worries. Thank you. Have a good one. As much as I'm not with the mum now, that shouldn't affect the relationship I have with my son. How'd it go? Yeah, no, he just x-rayed me. Hurt my uncle a little bit. I was just like, I need to find a good job that pays more money. Genuinely panicking. We didn't take any lefts or rights. I'm not doing well my first job. <laughs> Skyler was just the one that, that helped me through my panic and my issues. And he was just like, stop being an idiot. Are you going to be a dad now? Things aren't going to be over. You're going to just embrace it, and you're going to do better at work because you're just going to be happy with life. You're going to feel more self-fulfilled, you know? It's not that bad. Your progression is coming. You're going to get more money. Things are going to work out, you know? And you looked ahead in the future. It was just something that I wasn't doing, you know? I was just genuinely going, I'm finished. <laughs> so Heineken won your leg nil. Do I see it? Yeah. You see that crack there? Ooh. Your foot's fine, though. That's good news. Yeah, it's gone. It's a straight, clean yeah, break. break. Yeah, this will just give you casting crutches. Skyler was pushing like other managers. He will be the first one to recommend me for for something. Yeah, he just genuinely helped me build up my reputation and progress. And now I'm on the management side. It's a, it's literally a whole new world to uh, to bartending. Ah. No pain, no gain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't see where the gain is to this. <laughs> now it's got to the point where I've got to think of another life, you know? i got more than one mouth to feed now. Like, I can't just go around spending money, buying everyone around. So not to seem insensitive, but uh, when can you work again? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, bonus take six weeks to heal. Six weeks? Oh, cool. That's not too bad. Life is changing, just kind of panic over. Now it's time I've got to actually have a career. It's less party and bartending, more like business. This is a new one, no? this is a new record. <laughs> for people trying to get out of work. 82-year-old <laughs> Barbara and her husband Clarence are being closely observed, having sustained multiple injuries when they were knocked down by a motorbike. Do you mind taking them, James? Consultant Reese has sent Barbara for an urgent CT scan to determine the full extent of her injuries. When will I be able to see Barbara? Donate your muscular injections. I'm going to give it to your arm. Retired university professor Clarence has an injury to his leg and a cut to the head, but his condition is more stable than his wife's. The hospital have been informed that their children live abroad. What joined at the hip? 
Oh, I was trying to work how long we've been married. I can't work it out. It's either 56 or 58 years, something like that. We've never had a crossword. We've had it rough, both of us. We're both about six years old during the Second World War. We're both bombed out or bombed out, shattered, and both our mothers died within the year. But we survived. Barbara and Clarence met at a dance and married in 1956. They had three children, but lost their eldest John last year after a heart attack. He was 49. I think losing a child is probably, I don't know, one of the hardest things that you go through, really. And my grandma from my dad's side lost two of her children. The one thing I always remember my nan doing when my uncle died was about six months after, she'd always make up a plate of food for him. And I think that's, I guess it's a way of coping, isn't it? What happened to Tom? We're off to Waitrose across the road. Hey, we? I parked my car there. All right, lads. We're a statistic now again. Yeah. This is Barbara's. Have you seen her leg? Yeah. Come and have a look at this. You'll be well, so bad. Bless her. She's got the fibula. The scan of Barbara's head came back clear, but she'll need surgery on her leg. Your husband's next door, and I've just been told his scan was was fine. Okay, so he's all right. <laughs> Do you want your wife's just next door? Yes. So your wife's in this bay next door. Do you want to see her in a little while? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So what we can do is move yes, the screen. Yes, I'm dying to see her. I know I'm not you dying. are. No. <laughs> I want to see her. I know you do. She wants to see you as well. There you go. I can't reach out. Yeah, I'm you can. Tied up. You're tied up. If you're a part of a couple, you know all you really want is your relative. You know that your partner to be there holding your hand. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> And sometimes just holding a hand is, is enough. You know, a squeeze of a hand sometimes is enough for you to know that the other person's OK. We've been very lucky, both of you. Very lucky. Yeah. I think your husband wants your hand. <laughs> it's lovely, thanks. I love my wife. You do? I can tell. To me. She's just the same as when I married her.